Welcome to TJ's podcast. Hey there. Oh, we got a lot of stuff to get into today. I mean, just information coming from every direction on every subject. But don't forget tomorrow's po- is tomorrow Thursday. Yes. Yeah. Tomorrow's podcast will be um, a special guest who is a real prosecutor in a uh, DA's office who um, who is going to tell us uh, what it's like behind the scenes when they're making a crime documentary because she was featured in one uh, with this uh, famous case that she prosecuted not long ago. So that'll be that'll be interesting. Uh, Riggins, when's the last time you and your dad have been into like a, a serious argument or your dad was really mad at you? I know Ooh. you say that he used to, and when y'all were young, you would say something and he would get mad and I, I, he was going to like backhand you or something. He'd start doing a crazy <laughs> thing, you know. <laughs> like that that's a good question when's the last time you got you, know, you your dad whipped you did you ever get spankings no. as a kid you didn't uh did your brothers no no it was uh the threat i always say like the threat of violence mm-hmm. was more than enough just to uh correct the behavior because it was terrifying yeah with all three of you they i believe so the 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 threat of the violence was all it took not me. I, I didn't get many. Um, well, people call them spankings, but we, we called them whoopings. I didn't get many whoopings growing up. My brother got more than I did. Um, but especially since I've been an adult, you know, I don't. I can't imagine my dad like getting pissed at me and saying, "I'll knock you off the oh, chair," yeah, or yeah. you know, whatever. No, it, I don't think it's ever happened like that as it as I've gotten older. But if it did. Would it, it wouldn't ruin your relationship with your dad, right? Uh, no. No, okay. Well, there's some whiny ass um, <laughs> guy whose wife wrote in to Dear Abby. And, um, you know, I don't know if I ever believe any of these Dear Abby letters or yeah. any of this kind of stuff, but... I think I, I would believe this one because the people are from Oregon, and you know how weird Oregon people are. <laughs> um, I'll just read the whole thing, and you tell me whether or not her husband is over, she and her husband are overreacting um, about his dad getting mad at him. Um, she said, while I was visiting my father-in-law, a heated conversation turned violent. My husband, Rob, was helping his dad and a neighbor with a house project. When Rob's dad became upset at him, he lifted the power saw he was holding, turned it on, and motioned toward Rob, saying, You're lucky I don't slit your throat. (laughs) What? Yeah, can you believe how much of a wuss this son is to be whining about that? Complainer. Yeah. Yeah. He said uh, some other unkind things, and we left. Um, (laughs) Unkind. Unkind. Uh, He's not reached out to my husband since, and uh, Rob has deleted his phone number. His dad sent me a text taking no responsibility for his actions and blaming Rob, which is why we have decided to cut ties for now. We have a teen daughter. And my father-in-law has also texted her. We do not want her around him, and Rob wants to instruct her not to respond. The dad, uh, I mean, sorry, the day his father acted like this was also the one-year anniversary of the passing of his long-term girlfriend, who was more like a wife. Should we tell our daughter not to respond to his message? Well, first of all, that's one of the things that makes me think it's fake because if a teenager gets a um, a text from her grandfather and she doesn't know anything's wrong, she's going to respond right away. The yeah. Teenagers aren't just going to walk around going, I don't know whether to respond to this or not. Or I'll get to it later. Yeah. But I don't think you should tell her that. I think you should just say, hey, yeah, look, why don't you go set up a play date with grandpa where y'all are um, you know, putting a roof on a house? 
and just have fun with it. <laughs> you idiot. Yeah. Of course you don't you don't let her go around the grandfather if he's threatened to cut your husband's throat yeah. with a saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's not just about the relationship between those two guys anymore. It's that guy. Right. It's yeah. grand, grandpa's a little unhinged. Right. If he'll flip out like that. Which is a crazy thing anyway. <laughs> I will cut your neck <laughs> with a power saw. And how did he... How did the the son hear what he said over uh, the sound of the saw? <laughs> That's what I'm picturing. Is it a I'm picturing like a it circular being a saw? Or yeah, a, I'm picturing it being a skill saw, circular saw okay. kind of thing. Yeah, working on a house and project because he's not out there cutting down trees with a chainsaw. Yeah, 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 or like a hedge trimmer or something. Yeah, but the circular saws are loud. You're right. Mm-hmm. How could you even hear him? He's like, <laughs> I cut your neck. <laughs> That's crazy. So that's got to be made up, right? I don't know. I don't doubt that Grandpa probably, you know, I, that seems totally believable. But what in the world could the son, adult son have done that would warrant the, his dad saying, I'll cut your throat with this saw? I don't know. While you're working on a house project, you're working on with the neighbor on something, like you're putting shelves in his garage or whatever. Yeah, there was a story in the news, uh, Oliver social media about that father that his son was working on a truck jacked up yeah and he walked in the barn and kicked out the jack yeah. and let the car, truck crush his son i saw but that I, yeah i don't know you know and, and it, i think that was like over insurance money or something so i don't know but i mean yeah okay that's more understandable believable if it's over insurance money or something but if you're just like your son didn't hold the board in the right spot while you were trying to cut it or whatever yeah or you just start jawing at each other yeah i mean i'm sure my dad's probably wanted to knock my teeth out on occasion but he's never you know verbalized it right but this guy's i mean he's got a teenage daughter so that's how old he yeah. is Can you imagine you know your brother your oldest brother helping your dad with something your dad saying oh, i'll cut your throat what the hell happened out here i'd be grabbing popcorn because <laughs> I'm, I'm like clearly this is not i mean he's just having a moment yeah that would be a crazy thing to say but if he cut said that neck. if he said that to to your brother either one of your brothers because they both have kids would they let that affect them coming back around having the kids you know probably. around your dad probably yeah sensitive yeah, especially that middle one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, what is the line when you're talking about words? Because he didn't do anything. I mean, he mm-hmm. said, I'm just going to cut your neck, and he's got a soft, which is a crazy thing to do. Yeah. Like, where is their line? But I think the throat sounds more dramatic even it does. than next. He said, I cut your throat. Cut your throat. Like, what, dude, chill out. I'm helping you with a home improvement project, <laughs> and all of a sudden, threatening to cut my neck. I'm doing this for free. I'm helping your yeah. old ass. Well, I think they were both helping the neighbor, so then he oh, may okay. have uh, right. he may have embarrassed his dad in front of the neighbor or something. Yeah, maybe. But that can't be that can't be a, a, you know an isolated incident. You don't think- just threaten to to cut your son's throat when he's forty out yeah. of nowhere. Yeah, you got to be pretty much a hothead all the way around. Yeah. Every once in a while, you'll see a flare up of my dad's temper over like the craziest thing, and it and it takes me right back. I'm like, oh, I know that guy. <laughs> I remember him. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I don't. You can't let that around your kids. I don't think so. And he's gonna flip out like that. But you know, uh, everybody has. I think everybody pretty much has that. At least one person in their family. When uh, you start to like say you're gonna be having the first grandkid of the family or whatever, and so there's gonna be an uncle or an aunt or maybe one of the grandparents is gonna have to do something different before you want your kids to be around them. Yeah. A major change needs yeah. to happen before you're comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that would have to be one of until you stop saying that you're going to cut my throat with a saw, a power saw. You can't see my daughter anymore. <laughs> you won't see your granddaughter again. <laughs> Not anger management. Just you can't say uh-huh. you're going to slit my throat, cut yeah. my neck. <laughs> I didn't have anybody in my family like that, but I have had people you know in my life when my kids were little and all that i that i wouldn't let my kids be around they were sure. friends i wouldn't let them be around 
Yeah, and that's okay. But that's I imagine that coming from somebody you care about saying, you know, you're you're in such a screwed up place. I don't even want you around my kids. Mm-hmm. You know, wow. I'd probably turn it on them. Go, it's your fault. You've you've made me be this way. Yeah. You've made me be violent. Nobody's ever handled that news well. No. It's like, you know what, you're right. I do need to make some changes. <laughs> Somebody's like, ah, no, that's me. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what a family member could tell you that would be, you know, more of a kick in the gut than you're not, you know, uh, fit to be around my, my children. That's probably it. Imagine if one of your brothers told you that about your nieces or nephews. Yeah. It's like, devastating. Oh, my God. Not that I would miss them so much, but just, like, you think so little of me. Right. I'm like, I mean, that's fine. This is what but my I, life has become. Yeah, like, I'd be like, give me a break. Mm-hmm. You know better. <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of hard for you to imagine actually doing something so bad that yeah, you know, that would do that necessitate that yeah because you automatically assume that if they said that to you they're just being um, overly sensitive or whatever yeah, sure hmm. so what I tried to steal the Christmas tree this year <laughs> Good deal get another one but I mean there are a lot of those where you know you're gonna have to quit drinking you're gonna have, you know if you want to see your nephew yeah you, you know if you get so belligerent then that's probably mm-hmm. a good idea Mm-hmm. I don't need to be around kids. I was kind of like that. Like if a couple were, when my daughter was, was young and knew things that were going on, you know, if she's a baby, it wouldn't be that big a deal because they don't know any different. But if there were friends who were coming and they weren't married, um, I never knew how I would handle that and say, I don't, you know, I don't want my kids seeing that y'all aren't married and you're sleeping together. You thought about that? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't have wanted that. I wouldn't have allowed it actually. A couple in your house that wasn't, that were living together, but weren't married Mm -hmm. in in fear of that. She might ask questions about why are they not married Um, or is it your own? No, it would be because I wouldn't want her to think that's the way to go, that it's okay to be you know doing because all she she knew at that point all kids know is their parents you know and their grandparents they sleep together they're married they're a family um but if they're not married i mean you 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 teach kids whether it sticks or not they, they shouldn't be you know sleeping with people they're not married to so if i'm condoning it with somebody else and going oh it's okay they're fine then she would think well my dad's cool with it so you think she had a concept of that at, at an early age? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about at an age, like I said, where she knows, you knew what was going on, what was happening. But, you know, if she would have been a baby, it wouldn't have been that big a deal. Uh, because she wouldn't have known one way or the other. Um, but when they're impressionable, yeah, I, I would have, I would have had to have dealt with it, you know. Did you ever have that happen? No. Okay. No. But, I mean, there, there are all kinds of things. When you become a parent, there are all kinds of things that you will say, I don't want my kid to be around this, 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 or this. You know? And that was one of them. I mean, we're raising her in a Christian home. Whether, you know, in, in you know modern times it's normal or not to, you know, act a certain way or not do a certain thing, you still want to instill the the right concept into them. And I, you know, just like I don't want her to think that Jody and I condone shacking up. Yeah, which is why I'll say this. You know, you've told that story about those friends of yours that hooked up in your bathroom during a yeah. Super Bowl party. I'm surprised you don't have a more uh, aggressively negative opinion about that. I'm surprised you didn't beat the hell, or, you know, whatever, because mm-hmm. that's wildly inappropriate in anybody's yeah. house, let alone somebody who has the views that you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I well, think you would have come out harder against that. No, he'd have beat my ass. Would he would have beat yeah. the shit out of you? Yeah. Are you still friends with him? Yeah. Oh, you are? Mm-hmm. Um, and there was nothing hurt in the house, and he is 
such a, a nice guy and would do anything in the world for me. And he is, you know, like martial arts trained and all that stuff. But I didn't even think of it that way. I just thought, oh, come on, that's not cool. Um, but I blamed the his girlfriend. Oh, it was a girl? It wasn't even a husband and wife? No. Oh, really? Mm-mm. But I blame her. <laughs> of course you do. She brought that on. <laughs> Are they still together? No. 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 Not long after that, I don't think that they were together. If you had found that out while it was happening, would you have done anything, or would you have just said, "Well, everybody leave them alone"? Um, well, I would have not. If people were in there, like, oh, yeah, look at that, yeah. I would have tried to get that squelched because yeah. um, it, it would make it trashier, even if yeah. people say they're making a big deal out of it. Jody was more bothered by it than I was. It's but my kids, you know, my kids weren't home. There was nothing, no kids there. There was nothing like that. It was just, I don't know. And it, and he may have all, it just been messing with me. I didn't see it happening. Yeah. They were just laughing about it. So we just had sex in your bathroom. Like, is, oh, okay. Is Jody okay with them? Ever, him coming back over? I mean, she never held a grudge or anything. Or no, no, no. She she's fine. Mm-hmm truth of the matter she probably liked it she probably did knowing that way she is hussy <laughs> <laughs> all right there's a crazy celebrity story um and i think i've noticed something in this that uh, maybe no one else has noticed um because i'm that way <laughs> um but it is a situation where a, a celebrity uh, woman is much older than her new boyfriend and she's talking all about it and we'll give you the details coming up next tj's podcast we're here with our old friend richard Takato, the richard Takato companies uh now richard you just told me something very important that you wanted me to say uh but i don't remember what it was so can you say it for me <laughs> It was something about numbers and percentages and things that are, yeah, I don't this understand. Is the yeah, this is the best way for load officers to keep the majority <laughs> of the revenue that they earn every year, just like a real estate agent. Got it. You know, real estate agents pay what we call a cap in industry. Normally, it's around sixteen to twenty thousand dollars, and then after they pay in their commission to, to reach that for the company. They keep 100% of it. So we're going to do the same thing at Richard Ducato Companies. You as a loan officer are going to pay us a cap of $16,000, and everything else you you keep, it, everything else you earn is yours. So real quick, an example. If you make $200,000 in a year, I'm going to take 16000 of it, and then you're going to keep 184. The traditional model that loan officers work on now, they do two hundred thousand dollars in revenue, and they keep about 80000 or 100000 mm -hmm. Really? So this is going to change the game. We're going to do what other real estate firms have been doing for years, but we're doing it on the mortgage broker side. And this is something mm -hmm. that's not being done it's anywhere. Not, it's totally different. Totally different. Not being done anywhere else. We're also going to have revenue share. So if you bring loan officers to us, you're going to make money off. You know, you're going to make yeah. money from a downline, just sure. like EXP or Keller Williams. Wow. So it's you. You got to check it out. Just go to workwithrichard.info. It's simple. Workwithrichard.info. See if it's for you. Give me a call. Let's have a conversation. Okay. Now you want me to try to say it? Yeah, you say it. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. Workwithrichard.info. Hi, I'm Thomas Davis, and let me tell you why I'm a proud member of Team Neogenics. If your nagging pain is keeping you from being active, do something about it. Join the long list of pros and average Joes who have found relief with our stem cell and regenerative therapies. After trying out the others, I decided to try Neogenics. My knees and shoulders haven't felt this good since my college days. If you want to get back in the game, do what I did. Visit Neogenics, where all you have to lose is pain. Our nation's second president, John Adams, always slept on the left side of the bed. He believed this would increase his chances of having positive dreams and a more successful next day. That's why every mattress we sell here at Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress includes a left side. And for those that prefer waking up on the right side of the bed, our mattresses come with one of those too. This President's Day, you can save up to $500 on Tempur-Pedic sets. Only at Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress. Back to TJ's podcast. Yeah, yeah. 
Hey, thanks so much for listening to uh, the podcast. Or as uh, some people call it, a podcast. Thanks for listening to my podcast. That'd be funny if we did a podcast like sitting on the turlet, and then you could call it a podcast. I'm on the pot, which is always the most sophisticated way to say that someone, you or someone else, is using the bathroom. Yeah. It's like, hey, all this was going on while I'm in there sitting on the pot. Yeah. That's pr- that's pretty much a southern thing, right? Yeah, I think so. Or still calling it a commode. He's yeah. in there on the commode. Yeah. He's on the damn commode. Leave him alone. <laughs> it's <is> trashy. <laughs> that's why I thought it would be so funny, you know, when everyone was speculating where Kate, Kate Middleton was. Yeah. Like if she just put out a statement, I'm like, sorry, I was taking a shit. <laughs> I was on the pot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's uh, what's more unsophisticated, saying that you're on the pot. Or you're popping a squat. Popping a squat. Yeah, something about popping it. I know. I think he was popping a squat right there. <laughs> Squeezing one off. Is it popping a squat or copping a squat? It's popping a squat, right? Oh, now that you say that, it might be copping a squat. I'm copping. Because you cop it's a cop feel. A, cop a feel. Yeah. Copping a squat. That magician. Yeah. Cop a feel. Yeah, cop a squat. It's cop. Okay. Glad to know that. That we figured out that mystery, <laughs> or we would have been um, faux pas. Mm. Well, it might be a regional thing now that I'm looking. So, I think they're probably both right. Mm-hmm. Like, like when you say kitty corner and other people say catty corner. Yeah. No, I say I say catty corner. I thought you said kitty. You say no, kitty no. corner. Yeah. No, I do. Yeah. yeah. Right. Kitty corner. Mm-hmm. And other people say catty corner. And then your true rural Southerners will call it Caddy Wampus. Caddy Wampus, yeah. Yeah. You ever heard that? Yeah, I think yeah. my mom uses Caddy Wampus. Yeah, she's got something. it in there all Caddy Wampus. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, Kristen Cavalieri yeah. uh, is a celebrity. She was on, uh, was it The Hills? The Hills, but before that, Laguna Beach. Laguna Beach, La- Lapuna Beach. All right. Yeah. And she's very pretty. She's 37 yeah. and seems like she's gotten prettier uh, with age. Yes. A lot of people do that. Yep. And so um, everybody's making a big deal about her new boyfriend. She's 37. He's 24. I don't care. Good for her. Um, but people always say, there's a double standard because if an older woman has a younger guy, she gets ridiculed and uh, older men with young women are treated like they're cool or whatever. They're not. I want to know who you think is treating a man cool who has a much younger woman. I mean, you should see um, like a lot of the rude things that people say to Ace, you know. Well, what he says they say on the on the social medias and all that, saying she looks like your daughter and mm-hmm. you know all of that kind strangers. of strangers. I mean, yeah. I, say, I say a ton of terrible things, but right. it's like strangers too. So what's the difference? Thirty-seven and twenty-four. What's what's 13? the difference? Huh? Thirteen. Thirteen years. Um. And look, if you're happy, you're happy. Whatever. Um. But I don't think people say as much rude stuff about an older woman with a younger guy now yeah i mean especially women yeah i mean you you show me a, a woman who's i don't know in her 40s that sees a man in his 50s with a, a, a on a date with a woman in her 20s and you can see any woman that's going to say that's cool Oh, good for him. That's awesome. People who say that are other men. Some other men. Same thing with women. The ones that say, "Oh, that is awesome." That's yeah. You go. There, you know, there are other women. Ooh, mm-hmm. they love it. Yeah. Universal acclaim. So, um, Kristen Cavallari. I never saw any of those shows. I was an adult when those things came out. I don't even know. Is uh, was Laguna Beach a reality show? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It was the first, you know, beach. It was all rich teenagers, and yeah. I loved it when I was a kid. Yeah, I know it was huge. Yeah, it was, 
in the hills what was that that was like the next show the sequel series that they did mm. in like you know the beverly hills so right. some of Kristen, uh lc was one of, i think she was on there and heidi montag remember oh her? yeah yeah spidey spidey uh, they just what, did the second series what was the patridge yeah audrina patridge, audrina patridge yeah she, she was another one yeah. knockout well um Kristen cavallari um, has said some things in this article that I find it, nothing to do with the age, but it's something that I've uh, always thought about. Um, and believe it or not, I've been vocal about it. <laughs> For once. So she was uh, on her podcast called Let's Be Honest. And uh, she was talking about, uh, you know, how they met, you know, before their first date and stuff she said quote he came and picked me up and he met my kids um he actually met my mom too because my mom was babysitting my kids so it just really threw him in the mix um this is the uh this is the real first guy i'd say they've met um she said that when he came uh, to pick her up that her sons were uh, saying, can I show you my room? And he went upstairs uh, with the kids to see the room and the boys were so excited about him. My kids are really excited for me. My kids really want to see me happy and I've been very good at separating my dating life from them. Um, except, except for this, for this <laughs> other time, you know, <laughs> she said, um, she's, her kids had only met one other boyfriend and it was only because he was a major musician and her kids were big fans of him, which was in 2021. And they, they say that it was Chase Rice, the country singer. Um, so she met this guy because she saw he was in a boy band or something. Right. And then she reached cause she thought he was hot and she saw he was involved with some boy band and then reached out to get them on her podcast. Yeah, I think it's like a, a social media, like they call them the Montana Boys or something Oh, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Not a boy band. It was like an <laughs> influencer house yeah, kind of thing. Like everybody's hot. You yeah, know, stream, just... Streamer house. Yeah. That's even worse, I, I think. So she invited them to be on her show, and then she um, – she ended up saying, you know, he's my, you're my favorite. And they were flirting <laughs> and all that. <laughs> you're my favorite. Yeah. Thanks. Like, is, well, okay, which one? Cause I guess they weren't doing a, a video chat thing. And he said, you know, whatever his name is. And she goes, uh, who's talking? And I said, oh, wait, this is, you know, R Ralph, whatever his name is. Oh, good. Cause you're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so stupid. Uh, it's crazy. But regardless of all that, you don't, I don't care who it is. You don't have a first date with somebody and have your kids, you know, all excited about them, you know, being on a date with you and all of that. I mean, the kids have gone through enough in divorce, you know, and they're not living with their father anymore. And, you got another guy that they were a big fan of, so they were like, you know, really excited about him, and then he's gone. Yeah, you know. So that's what happens when you're when you introduce these people to your boyfriends or your girlfriends. You introduce your kids to them. Kids get you know excited about some of them, and then all of a sudden, there's another person that's not in their life anymore. Yeah, and this one's a TikTok star. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's good looking. He's a model. I mean, mm -hmm. he's very good looking. But you, do you think a 24 year old is like, he's going on a first date with a 37 year old? He's like, do, do I want to go see this, the kids' rooms? I mean, that's at it. <laughs> and, and I got to meet mom on top of all this stuff. I don't know. She could have figured out a better way. If, he's, if he insists on picking her up for a first date, mm -hmm. she could have found a better situation where exactly. he doesn't run into not only my three young kids, but also my mom. So you think she was showing him off to her mom? Something because yeah, she some, says she could, doesn't do that with other dates. Yeah, you could have figured something out. I don't know. Yeah. I'll meet you. I'll, I'll come out and say hi. Which she should have. Yeah. Either met him outside when he got there, 
or Take they an yeah. Uber, Uber to wherever you're going to meet. Right. You don't come to my house. And number two, the kids are answering the door. I got a feeling like the kids are all at the mm-hmm. door. Like, Hi. It's like, that's not, I don't know. Something about it. Is yeah. Awful. So it also says something that the only, if this is true, the only two boyfriends that she's ever had around her kids are celebrities. Yeah. You know, it's like, look, mom's going out with a country star. Look, mama's going out with an influence or a she's streamer. Got, yeah, she's got stuff going on. Because her dad is Jay Cutler. Yeah. Yeah. Former NFL quarterback. Mm hmm. And then they have a, a rocky breakup or something, too. So it was on and off nasty. for a while. Um, okay. But in the article, you know, they're talking about what a, a, a dedicated mom she is and all that. And it shows her and her two sons running on the beach like just playing and she's got her you know her arms up and they're running um should mom be wearing an ass out bikini in front of her sons i don't how, i don't use how much you ass know, <laughs> it, uh, it, any ass i think would be ass all right, I'll let, let you look, you tell me. Is this too, and it could be not too much ass. Is that too much ass in front of your middle school age boys? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Too much ass. And I know Certainly. people are going to be pissed off. You, a man can't be saying anything about a woman, what she should be wearing and what she shouldn't be wearing. I just, you know. You know, here's my thing about that is like, you know, everybody's got a trashy moment. Everyone's had trashy moments. The difference is you posted it. You put it in front of the world for the world to look at and either like or not like, and you're going to catch some judgment for it. So if you got your ass out, it might be different when you're hanging around the above ground pool in your backyard Mm -hmm. and your kids. (laughs) But if you start taking pictures of it and sharing them on, you know, the, with the world, then you know what? You're going to, you're going to get what you get. And there's also a difference in wearing an ass out bikini when your your kids are toddlers yeah, right these boys look like they're in like 10 or 11 yeah. you know look at mom's ass would you have died at that age if your mom probably. had taken you to the beach and she jumps out in an ass out bikini probably and then i know somebody's taking pictures of her of her ass <laughs> Where are you putting that? <laughs> I hope you're not going to post that, right? Like, the, I don't know. Uh, Mom, don't don't po- post your ass on social media. So, you don't think the guy Riggins wanted to actually be there, go, going up with the kids and looking at their room and maybe, all of that? Maybe he did, but I just think that's a lot to put on a 24 year old that's already kind of thrust into this different world. Probably does like her, but and if he didn't know it beforehand, and now he's forced to meet her mom and her three kids, I think that's a little inappropriate. Is she a big enough celebrity now that um, that that would um, make him want to be with her? You know, like yeah, her celebrity status. Oh yeah. man, so cool! I'm I'm dating a celebrity. Yeah, I'm sure that's a big part of their relationship. Because he's not, I guess he's not one of the famous streamers or influencers or whatever no he's looking at her like hey this is going to boost my yeah, people be my people are starting taking pictures of us paparazzi mm-hmm. are going to follow us i think it just adds to the, the popularity and he's good looking i mean he doesn't need to but right it, it it's not going to hurt him mm-hmm. uh and she's your age yeah one year older but. oh so if she wanted to keep that young man theme going after this guy, she's got you. Yeah, absolutely. I'll meet those kids. <laughs> They're more mature than the 24-year-old. We basically look the same, but yeah, I'm sure he's mm-hmm. not nearly as funny. <laughs> you picture him being a doofus. Yeah, you can't look like that. <laughs> you you don't look like that in your the life of the party <gasps> or part, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He, he probably did want to see those kids. Or, Do you have Legos? Do you have? I love Iron Man too. You got PS3. She's like, <laughs> she's like, Mark, we got reservations <laughs> at Le Cirque. He's like, no, I'm playing. <laughs> Shut up. I'll be down see, in five minutes. 
Ask your mom if I can stay the night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Princess Peach in Mario Kart. I can't just <laughs> can't just quit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, babe. <laughs> she walks up there farting in there and stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how about some juice boxes? <laughs> hey, Kristen, babe, yeah, leave us alone. <laughs> Go eat your old fancy dinner yourself. Yeah, it may be. We want corn dogs, <laughs> dino nuggets. <laughs> Maybe he is like, you know, I don't know him. I don't know. I've never even heard him talk, yeah. but you just get the vibe that if you look like that, mm -hmm. and you're a streamer. Do women accuse uh, him of just using her, like being a gold digger? I haven't seen that. I think it's more celebratory of her. Exactly. They're happy to see her, you know, uh, mm -hmm. with a young with a young guy on her arm. Yeah. Because it makes them feel like they could do it. Sure. Knowing they can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's got a lot of things going for her. No, she's I'm wealthy, just kidding. She's beautiful. So yeah, I mean, do you look at that and you go, "All right, well, okay, what a." Uh, what a shocker. You're a beautiful 37 year old and you're a celebrity and you got a lot of money. Uh, it's quite a feat to get a 24 year old guy to want to, um, be with you. Yeah. 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 You know, like when the, when the term MILF first started happening or cougar, you go, okay, well you're in your forties ladies. And you're going hanging around college boys and you feel like you've just, you know, climbed Mount Everest if you got one to sleep with you. Yeah. It's not that hard. Yeah. I mean, they're college boys and you're you're still pretty. So And you're putting it all out there. Right. Like you're, like, you're making no bones about it. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Uh, but hey, without the whole thing about the kids, doesn't doesn't matter to me one way or the other. Go have your young guy. I just like the observation of society and the culture and, and the differences in the way things are handled. And women are treated in society much better for dating younger men or being with younger men than older men are, yet, yet they claim that they're the ones who are put upon. Yes. And that it's a double standard that women aren't treated as, as heroes when they date a younger man like men are that's just not the case no it's it's amazing to me and, and I, I i find it interesting i'm not bitching about it or anything but when a group of people can be the victors and the victims at the same time yeah i just made that up copyright atj inc like you've made yourself the victor and the victim all at once. It's impressive. That 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 I just said that? Both. Okay. That they can do it? Yeah. Mm hmm Because both are celebrated in today's culture. You know, good for you. Go, go, go. And finally, we were able to do this. But there are so many of us who still have to deal with the ridicule. And I bet you have good for you. You're doing something great, awesome, inspirational to the rest of us. But I know you're still going to be treated wrong. People are still hating on you because you're a woman doing it. And it can be the victor and the victim at the same time. God. That is a profundity for your ass right there. <laughs> I'm going to have to take a break. <laughs> Woo. Can't even breathe. Got more coming up. More of TJ's podcast is coming up. When it comes to losing weight, sometimes you don't even know where to start. You know that it needs to happen, but you need some help. Well, you start by going to acetj.com slash weight loss and ordering Calitrin. Calitrin is scientifically proven to help you lose weight, and it is not a drug. It is not a drug. Repeat that. So here's what you do. You go to acetj.com slash order three months, and then you'll get three months free. 
four months, four months free. That's how it works with Calitron. Winter is here, which means you're just going to stay inside and not do anything fun and exciting, right? No, that is wrong. Because this year, you're going to go to acetj.com slash Gaston and see all of the incredible things that you can do right now in Gaston County. Everything is laid out for you from things to do to restaurants to bars to shopping to unique weekend activities. And we'll get you ready for the spring and the summer with a list of all their great festivals. Find all of this and much more at acetj.com slash Gaston. If you're so frustrated because you're having to run around all the time, you're so busy, you feel like you're not getting your family something great to eat, then you need Culver's. It's the perfect thing for you. Always made to order, fresh, hot ingredients all day, every day. And not only do they have the freshest ingredients all day, every day, but they are a part of the community. They're proud to be a part of the Indian Trail community where they're under new ownership. Belmont, University Area, Salisbury. Make them a part of your daily routine. Make it your new neighborhood spot. Short waits for the freshest food in town. Get details at a tj.com slash culvers welcome back world to tj's podcast Podcast. (laughs) yeah fanaticos thank you thank you for loving me it's such a great honor being loved so deeply by so many of you. We didn't ha- you know, hear back from the uh, complaining lady from this week that we've been following. She didn't send another message. I don't think. Oh, no? No. But then again, I didn't taunt her by writing back me something silly. Yeah. Um, Riggins, is this thing that you're, you were asking me about, is this becoming a trend with guys? Yeah. They're doing. They're starting to do it a lot. Yeah. Um, from what I've read, did, did they go get this done professionally, or is it just something they can do at home? You can do it at home. Okay, so guys are are putting temporary tattoos on to go do certain things. Yeah, to go yeah. out to like to a club or a bar or something, and they add these elaborate temporary tattoos that you can buy online. Well, how do they? How do they get them where they look real, or do they not look real? I don't know. I don't. I mean, they they're just black. You know, they're like um, not tribal, but those kind of just designs. Yeah. Like, I guess if you think it makes you look more badass, you do that. But you don't want to take the step of doing the permanent thing, making it permanent. Yeah, I can see that. Um, but I would never put on a fake tattoo to do unless I'm doing some sort of a bit of something. Yeah. You know, like, to try to impress people because like what okay i mean i guess it's the kind of the same theory as makeup like you don't care mm-hmm. what you look like without it but it just seems and a lot of women are saying this is like is this a red flag that he wears temporary tattoos to make himself look cooler when he goes out well see and then this is another double standard but it, and listen just because i point out a double standard doesn't mean that i disagree with it um, you can point out the, that there are double standards in, in the society and the culture all, all the time, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you think it's wrong. I, I think this one is, is right, but it is a double standard that men are always judged harshly about doing something to make themselves appear um, better than they are as far as bringing in uh, things that from the outside, like a man getting Botox is h- more harshly judged than a woman doing it. Or if a man got extensions in his hair to make his hair look, you know, thick and, and, uh, and longer and, and things, then he would be judged harshly. Women do it. Nobody thinks a thing about it. It's expected. Yeah. So it's almost like women, women, are, it, it's understood that it's okay for women to do stuff that is going to make them appear a certain way whereas if men do it they would just be called fake yeah but women get called fake too the fake boobs and the lips and the fake hair and and all of that but it's not so you know out of the realm of possibility but a guy sitting in his house trying to get a temporary tattoo on just right to make it look real so he can go out for the night and look like a badass that's a different that's a different category and i'm guilty of judging it too i'm like that's douchey but yeah you just kind of expect that (laughs) 
Yeah, I would judge that harshly. Of course. Probably. Now, I knew a guy who got, he went to the, I think a real tattoo artist did just a drawing on his arm that made it look like a tattoo, but he was doing it for a photo shoot thing. Yeah. He wasn't walking around saying, I'm a badass, look at my yeah. new tattoo, and it's, you know, the ink's running down his arm. Right. And I wanted to see some of these tattoos. I'm like, what are people getting that, you know, would they think would improve their look? Like, I don't know. But nobody had, like, examples of it. But I would imagine it's probably, like, a bunch of different tattoos, which is sort of the, the trend now. Yeah. To do like the whole sleeve of just kind of patchwork tattoos. Oh, you mean just like a single one here and then one here? And yeah, one like here you know, they're like all a, messy yeah. now. There, there's no real cohesion with tattoos, I guess. I know. Doesn't make sense to me, but I don't know whether I like that better than a full sleeve or not. I, like Harry Styles, he's he's one that's got these just bizarre, mm -hmm. not just coherent, no rhyme or reason to yeah. it. Mm -hmm. But Lady Gaga kind of also does that same thing. She's got tattoos, and they don't, they're don't they all music-related, but they're all in different spaces. I'll never forget, she was on the Oscars. Yeah. And she does this unbelievable tribute to the sound of music. Mm -hmm. It's like Julie Andrews, like some birthday or something. She comes out, and she does like a medley of all these sound of music songs. And my mom's favorite movie. She's watching it, and Lady Gaga is incredible. And at the end, she raises both of her arms, and she's got these just gnarly <laughs> tattoos on the inside of her arms you go oh and it just completely i don't know for anybody else but my mom goes oh oh like she was just <laughs> shocked by it and hey, she's weird yeah. i know people you know you don't say anything negative about lady gaga but she is weird but then a lot of a lot of good performers are weird sure, most of them are yeah i just can't see her being just a cool person to sit around and have a beer with or go you know, go eat lunch with. You don't think? She like she's seems not gonna, like she's just like. <laughs> <laughs> she's not going to eat at Panera with you? No. But you know what creeps me out, though? And I'm sorry if this offends people. But when those tattoos just look like they're just solid black. Down, is it, it, who was it that just got all of that? Just, Machine gun killer. Yeah. Just completely covered in solid black ink. Yeah. Arms. Yeah. Whole torso. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Because it's supposed to be, you know, it's, when tattoos got popular for the mainstream, it was, this is, this is my uh, way of expressing something about me and all of that. And now it's just like, color me black. Blank space. Yeah. Unless he's addicted to the pain of it, which I've heard some people are. Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? Again, weirdo would have to be a weirdo to be with that Megan Fox. Wouldn't you take a little bit of crazy though? No, just to, no? not her oh. kind of crazy. Mm -mm. See, I don't even think she's that hot. Megan Fox? Mm -mm. Oh, wow. Because I look at her in, in the, the stuff that I know that she's about. You know, I never believed that when I was a kid that if somebody was really nice or funny or whatever, you you. You, they would become better looking to you. You forget that you don't think they're not so good looking. And I've always, you know, prided myself on being able to separate people's personality from their looks. Um, it's one of one of my biggest accomplishments. Well, but with her, I can't. I can't do it. She's she's just such a a weird, peculiar, I think, destructive person. I can't even see her being pretty. Where are you learning about Megan Fox? I mean, what do you know? I mean, I know the kid thing that, that some of her kids are allegedly a transgender, but what do you know? Do you know something about Megan just Fox? Just everything I've ever seen about her. She's just weird. Really? Okay. Yeah. I don't know that much about her because I was looking at my, who cares? I don't mm -hmm. know because she, she's that so yeah. attractive that, it, you know, mm -hmm. but they say she's very smart. I'm not kidding. Like <laughs> I forget who said it. They were like, you, you might find this surprising. She's very, very intelligent. On paper? I don't know. I forget because who didn't it was. she just write a book of poetry or something yeah, that was like just awful? Oh, was it bad? I don't the know. The ones that I've that I heard read you know, on different podcasts and stuff, they're awful. Uh, just, yeah, and again, know. weird. 
do you want to read a I book mean, of Megan Fox's poetry? No. I mean, where is your life at? I don't want to read a book of anybody's damn poetry. Yeah, I mean, even the best poetry. Because I don't like it. We should read some of Megan Fox's poetry. You should read <laughs> Megan Fox's poetry. I would love to hear that. Because I, I think it was all about, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong here, but I thought a lot of it was about feminism and stuff and, you know, and being you know victim and all of that i just see her like writing opening her journal and then a jackass machine gun kelly walks in he's like babe what are you doing i think you love that journal more than you love me machine gun please <laughs> i'm trying to write some prose here and you're really messing me up mm. sorry but you know what he seems like when he's being normal that he he could be kind of uh, kind of a good guy. Really? I didn't yeah, I saw. Um, I was watching the uh, All Star NBA All Star stuff with my son a few years ago, and he was playing in the Celebrity All Star game, and there was a little boy that is a um, he's a kid actor. I think he was on the new Wonder Years show, so he's little, and he was out there talking to Machine Gun Kelly, and the, and he was really nice to him. Okay. Yeah, like nice. really like a cool guy introduced himself as Colton or whatever his name is. Yeah. Is that his name? Colson. Colson, yeah. And uh, just talking to the kid and spending time with him and, and things like that. So I always wonder what kind of a stepdad he is. Yeah. Well, and he's a father too. They got a kid together? He's got his own kid. Oh, he does? Yeah, grown like teenager, I think. How old is he? 20s, uh, maybe 30 something. I don't know. I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah. I wonder what, what Father's Day looks like with <laughs> with MGK. <laughs> Does he want to go to IHOP? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Let's just go to Denny's. Yeah, just like, having the kids is all I'm interested in. I just want to be around my kids. They're getting him a, you know, a necktie and some yeah. socks. Yeah, and... a macaroni tie and the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> some golf balls. Hmm. So he doesn't seem that weird but do you have to assume that that uh brian austin green is weird too because he was married to megan fox and all that i do i don't like you can't you can't be a normal person and be married to someone that weird and then have kids with them and stuff there's you gotta have something weird about you too well he's got three names that's i mean he goes by three names that's pretty odd well i don't think he does anymore i think he tried to drop that a long time ago he mm -hmm. just wanted to be brian green you know, like after 90210 or Melrose or whichever one yeah. he was on. Sorry, nobody. I mean, if you went came to your height as a three name person, you can't just go to. Yeah, like you can't just be uh, Machine Kelly. No way. You got to be Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's your name. Sorry, mm -hmm. you chose it. So yeah, I wonder what wonder what that's like. Wacky. Father's Day. I bet I don't even know. They may, they may not even celebrate it in the um, Kelly household because yeah, it's just like too traditional. It's the sign so, of the patriarchy. Know. Yeah, yeah. Why would when would they ever celebrate you know, anything about men one way or the other? Now you think he's submissive to her, like she rules the roost? Probably. Megan Fox. Probably. Do you think she rules it by? Would you picture her just like all the time just being authoritative or she rules the roost by um, by her emotions being like a cry bully or something? I picture her pretty authoritative. Authoritative. Yeah. Like bossing him around and stuff. Yeah. Not just crying if she wants to get her way. If it's true what they say that she's like very, very intelligent, I'll take them at their word, and she's that hot, that's a dangerous combination. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just world. I just can't believe she's intelligent. Yeah. I don't understand why you would say that somebody that good looking. No, I mean just somebody that weird. <laughs> you know. And some of the ideas that she has and her beliefs and all that. You'd have to be an idiot to believe some of the stuff that she that she preaches. Just maybe her IQ is a is a level of you know, a high level, but people can still be stupid. 
even if they have a high IQ. Oh, sure. I want to find out what they were talking about when they said she was they talking to her. It was like, wow. They were like really bowled over by her. Was it a guy you remember I, that yeah, was saying? Yeah, it was. It? Yeah, probably because she was hot. And I she think. Just, she could string a sentence together. You know, she gets you know, points. Yeah. But I, don't, I think I see I see women all the time that I think are better looking. Than Megan Fox? Mm-hmm. Like who? Um, well, if I had a celebrity to pick over her, it would be a bunch. Like, you know, Nicole Scherzinger would be one. Shot. Um, they have a similar look. To me. Mm. Sultry, dark. Yeah. I would take Halle Berry mm. over her. Mm. I can't think of a white one. <laughs> we won't hold it against you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I think this Kristen Cavallari is um, is hotter. She's super hot. You know, she's got an annoying voice, but she's does she? Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard it's of like Stevan. I mean, that oh. was like when, back on Laguna Beach, but yeah, she was just obnoxious, kind of annoying. She's hot, though. And that wasn't just a girl show? You watched it, too? It kind of was. Well, everybody watched it. Everybody watched it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in retrospect, yeah, it's like a girl show. It's a reality show. But that was where we saw these teenagers going to prom, and they were doing mm -hmm. these over-the-top, what is now known yeah. as a promposal. It, it just seems so foreign. Is that what started my super sweet 16 thing? Were they rich doing stuff like that? I don't know. Yeah, but it was that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. so over the top. Wow. But Were you also a big fan of Dawson's Creek? Were you into no, that? No, but Matt was. My oldest brother mm -hmm. was. Uh, Gilmore Girls. Yeah. My brother was. loves the Gilmore Girls. I know. Uh, <laughs> pretty near 60 years old. Yeah. That's where Matt, my oldest brother, fell in love with Katie Holmes on uh, Dawson's Creek. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He loved her. Mm-hmm. She's pretty. And that Nev Campbell was on there right no party of five she was on yeah, party of five right five guys party of five guys <laughs> if they did tv commercials that would be funny if they get the cast together Inc. we know you got money five guys call yeah. us i want to know where bailey is right now and then matthew fox we know where jennifer love hewitt is yeah. she's still out there working yeah Mm. All right. Well, um, tomorrow, don't forget, we're going to have that uh, the uh, my friend who is a prosecutor on giving us some inside information on that world uh, and uh, all kinds of other fun stuff. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, love you. Bye. Serving the world. It's TJ's podcast.